this might be the weirdest video I ever make. Howdy. My name is Nonat, and if you've been playing tabletop role-playing games for a long enough period of time, chances are you've run into the Polymorph spell. This doesn't matter if you're playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition, 1st Edition, D&D 5, 4, 3A, or 1, or even some other fantasy systems that have a spell that changes the shape of the target. The Polymorph spell has really been a staple in fantasy spellcasting for really as long as I can possibly remember. Even in movies and video games and whatnot, there's usually a spell that changes the shape of either yourself into something stronger or the opponent into something weaker. But how deep does the Polymorph effect go? Does it change your mind? Does it change your abilities? Does it change anything within you? This is a conversation that started as a really stupid discussion on my Discord server. Shout out if you haven't joined already, I'll leave a link at the top of the description. And I was gonna leave it there. But then I went to a party with some friends, and we discussed this for no joke, almost an hour straight. So let's talk about this in a video. How deep does the polymorph effect go? Let's start this off by putting it in the context of the question that started it all. And I'm gonna do my best to make sure this video doesn't get demonetized, so if some of my terminology seems weird or very specifically scientific, that's why. YouTube, don't cancel me. Let's say you have two characters. One is a human, one is an elf. They conceive a child, half-elf. Cool. Now what happens if that human is polymorphed into an elf? They commit the act of conceiving a child, and then after the act, the human polymorphs back. What ancestry is the child? It seems easy at first, but the more you think about it, the deeper and deeper this question goes as you try to uncover the various layers of magical effect that Polymorph induces. First off, once a fluid, such as blood or saliva, leaves the polymorphed body, is that fluid the same? Does it become dispelled? If you are a human polymorphed as an elf and you spit on the ground, is that spit still elven? Or is it still elven until the spell overall wears off and then when you turn back to a human, your spit on the ground becomes human? This becomes important because you look at certain polymorph abilities that might give you a spit attack. If you polymorph into something that can spit acid, then you can spit acid. But if you collect that acid into a vial, is it still- it has to be acidic, because once it lands a hit on an opposing creature, it deals acid damage even though it's no longer connected to you. So in that example, yes, even though the fluid has left the body, it is still acidic. Now what about if you polymorph back? Is that acidic spittle still acidic? Because it was generated by the polymorph form, does it stay that way? or does it change once the spell wears off? My personal argument is that no, it does not, because it was created by the polymorph form, it is not in itself part of the polymorph form. My defense of this is dragon form. When you take on the form of a dragon with this spell, you gain a breath weapon. Whether you're breathing acid or lightning or poison, when you breathe that breath weapon, even if you turn dragon form off, it does not get rid of the effects of that weapon if it inflicts something like persistent damage. So by this logic, then, technically, if you were polymorphed into an elf, and you conceive a child with an elf, and then polymorph back, the child should theoretically still be a full-blooded elf because we have just determined that the fluids that were generated by the body do not change back once the polymorph effect ends. But let's move on to the next layer of this question. What exactly changes 
when you polymorph? Is it your entire being or just specific aspects? When you take on dragon form, do you become entirely organically identical to a dragon or is it just enough to replicate the effects? Well, we already know that it doesn't change everything. Under the 5e wild shape rules, it specifically states you retain your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So somehow this physical change does not affect you mentally whatsoever, which we can only assume means your physical brain must stay the same. So even though you have turned full dragon, you still got a humanoid brain up in that gigantic scaly noggin. Additionally, let's take a look at the exact wording under Pathfinder 2E's humanoid form spell. This is a polymorph spell, but the first sentence says, you transform your appearance into that of a small or medium humanoid. You are not becoming that humanoid. Now, the difficulty here is that this is the only polymorph spell that says that. The rest of them in Pathfinder 2e state that you enter a battle form of a dragon or a tiger. This is where I think we need to admit that there are different levels of polymorph, and to back this up, I bring up the 5e version of Alter Self. See, Alter Self has three different options. One of them is Natural Weapon, which means you gain physical claws, physical fangs, spines, horns. These are real. These will deal damage. These are actual claws. But the other option is Change Appearance. This one specifically states that you can change yourself to look like a member of any other race or ancestry, but your own statistics don't change. Here we can see there are two levels of polymorph with natural weapons changing the damage die of your unarmed strike to that of a claw versus alter appearance which does not change any mechanical aspect. So, we can rule out things like humanoid form and alter self pretty easily. If you are simply altering your external appearance, you would not change whatsoever on the inside. So in the theory of humanoid to humanoid shape changing, no. If you are a human who casts humanoid form or alter self to look like an elf and you conceive a child with another elf, that child is going to be a half-elf because your inside does not change. And we could end the video there. But science doesn't stop just because it gets awkward. Let's talk battle forms. As I've said earlier with the D&D wild shape, your physical aspects do change, already making wild shape a different level of polymorph than alter self. This means that your bodily structure is changing, your skin is changing to hide, your skeleton is changing into that of the animal, and so theoretically, Every part of you, aside from your mental faculties, imitates that of the animal you changed into. But again, we need to ask, how deep does this go? Does this only change it enough to that you can replicate the, the force and the power and the resilience of a bear? Or, for all sakes and purposes, are you a bear besides your brain? Now let's take a look at D&D 5e's actual polymorph spell, which makes things even more weird and complicated. Polymorph, the harmful spell, if you fail the saving throw, you take on the form of the creature chosen by the caster, but you lose your mental ability scores alongside everything else. If you're turned into a squirrel with an intelligence of three, your intelligence becomes three. But here's where things get really weird. Even with the polymorph spell, the target retains alignment and personality. Personality, to me, makes me think they can still think, they can still act for themselves, however, the mechanical implications of a lowered intelligence might affect that. This does not erase them. They have not been replaced by the animal, but honestly, let's step away from the mental topic. It's a little distracting and overall not super important to the subject matter at hand, which is what is the baby? And here I say, I don't know. And I don't think anybody knows.
Or that's what I would say if I didn't have a secret weapon in the tank and... Boy, am I gonna have to blur a lot of this out. Ladies and gentlemen, back in D&D 3rd Edition, there was a book. A very special book for a very special table running a very special type of game. And that book is the Book of Erotic Fantasy. Stay with me. Now within this 192 page tome of knowledge is the answer to our question. I will spare you the excruciating detail this book goes into. Like, if you're of age and you're just morbidly curious, find it yourself. I'm not even linking it. Now, the first sentence, of course, says, As a DM, you must choose if this happens, but then it goes on to give the book's firm stance on how it works. It starts by saying, as we came to the conclusion before, spells like Alter Self, which only affect appearance, cannot produce any kind of result. However, spells like Polymorph and Baleful Polymorph are considered, quote, a true transformation. As such, a female polymorphed into a male can successfully conceive a child with another female. If this is true, then scientifically speaking, if you can polymorph sex and it would work, I see no reason why you could not polymorph ancestry and it would work. And for that reason, if a human polymorphs into an elf through a true transformation, not a disguise spell, if they true polymorph themselves into an elf and conceive a child with another elf and then after the act, polymorph themselves back into a human, the resulting child will still be a full-blooded elf. I'm going to go wash my hands. I recommend you do the same. Goodbye.